All right, welcome everyone. My name is uh, Jesse Hawthorne Fix. You are here for a special presentation of my film series, Midnights for Maniacs, where we are celebrating Guillermo del Toro. Can we give it up for this genius? And before we get into the movies, um, there are a lot of new faces here, which is very special because you're in the oldest movie theater in San Francisco. And the Roxy Theater has, has been through a lot. Um, it's been a very hard time for independent movie theaters this past decade or two. And for the Roxy, a nonprofit who is still standing, um, you, are, you are now part of this history here. Some of you, you're actually a member, where it's just like the movie pass or something where you spend 10, $15 a month and you can come every single day to see alternative programming. Um, the Roxy Theater used to be a porn theater. I'm proud of that. The Roxy Theater also was one of the very first movie theaters to screen David Lynch's Eraserhead. Um, and as some of you who come out every, every single day, you know that it's your home away from home. Um, and uh, tonight we have a sold out crowd for a movie called Pan's Labyrinth and the Devil's Backbone. Can we give it up for <laughs> Now, um, the Roxy Theater is also one of the only theaters in the city that still projects 35 millimeter film. And tonight, both of our movies are on 35 millimeter. Um, and some of you, you don't care. <laughs> but tonight, we're gonna teach you to care. Uh, because it's a lot like getting to see the actual painting of perhaps an art piece that uh, you really love and you go fly around the world to see how small it is <laughs> but uh, it's, the, it's different than you know just looking up online and so this these prints you'll see maybe some scratches on them they played all around the world especially with uh, Guillermo del Toro's films, who has international acclaim, perhaps sometimes in other countries more than he does here. And uh, we have a, a projectionist who's actually in the booth who will be projecting every single reel tonight. Can we give it up for Colin here? And some of you, you know about this. You know that you want to look up in the top right hand corner. Uh, every 20 minutes or so because Colin's got two different projectors that he'll be changing the reels from and this is not like the Metreon where someone doesn't even have to press a button anymore it's just on a timer and uh, this is a real community here and hopefully you're gonna meet a new friend because we're here for like five hours tonight um, I know some of you you think you're only coming to see one movie uh, it's called Pan's Labyrinth, and I'd love for those of you who have never seen this film to raise your hand proudly. Yeah. Great. Uh, it's celebrating 10 or 11 years, um, so a lot of people in this room have not only seen it more than once, but they watched it when it originally came out, and it is now like they have a tattoo of it. <laughs> they, it it's part of their soul. They, they've watched this film so much. And um, I, do, I do need to warn you, um, first off, I, I teach film history at the Academy of Art University. There's some students who are getting extra credit tonight. <laughs> but um, when, you watch, when you watch certain films, it's very important perhaps to give a little bit of a warning uh, to some people because uh, sex and violence can, can really overwhelm an audience member, and I take that very seriously. Um, and the, these films are very disturbing. Um, and so when you're in a communal experience, sometimes it's a little bit unnerving because sometimes an audience member will start laughing at a very disturbing scene and, and, and you'll be crying. And um, this, is, this is what it's like, in fact, to um, be in a movie theater as opposed to being at home and you have to constantly whisper to your friend or to your partner, is everything gonna be okay? Uh, we're gonna take care of you, I promise. 
but um, this is a very exciting moment to be watching both of these movies because Guillermo del Toro has a new film coming out this week called The Shape of Water. When you start to pay attention to a director, um, you actually find that they maybe have similar themes in a lot of their movies. And when you study sort of any art, there's this idea of perhaps an auteur theory or um, uh, something like a motif that you're always going to look for. The two movies tonight, they're kind of sister films, and they're both going to be dealing with the Spanish Civil War. And um, I can promise you that Guillermo del Toro, he makes history really interesting. Uh, this isn't just about magical realism. They aren't just horror films. Uh, you really are going to learn about um, perhaps a man named uh, Francesco Franco. Uh, you are going to be going back into a time period of World War II. Um, you're going into a world of uh, anarchists and fascists. And uh, his films are, are truly, truly profound the more times that you watch them, because you can watch them from a historical perspective, a genuinely beautiful artistic one. You'll find the themes of perhaps the characters even in the uh, art direction. You want to look around at everything uh, throughout the movie. And I can tell you that The Shape of Water can, is, is follows this is that it's, uh, it's very similar with his themes of love and loss. And I have a whole lot of stuff to give to you because the studio found out that this um, double feature was happening and uh, Guillermo del Toro, he loves, he loves things. <laughs> like he loves books, he loves posters. He, he has an entire house, those of you that in fact went to his uh, art show that was down in, uh, at, Los Angeles and has been traveling around. He has an entire house of just books. He loves the, goth the gothic novel. He knows these stories so well. He knows William Shakespeare. He also knows Alfred Hitchcock. And he's referencing through them. It's a language that he has. And it's okay if you don't get those references, you'll still be able to enjoy the movie. But uh, he really is part of the past. And he's carrying that, like some of you. Some of you, you, you collect movies. Like you own them. You, you have VHS tapes, even and laser discs, and these things called DVDs, <laughs> right? And these are, don't laugh about that, right? They're, computers do not have DVD players in them anymore. And uh, people who are growing up in the next generation, they're learning from you, they're learning from these films, and um, they're gonna learn from all this stuff that I'm gonna give to you. So could you pull out your ticket stub? <clears throat> this ticket stub, I know, rub it. <laughs> Uh, I make these ticket stubs because I like to remember when I go to a movie, instead of having just a little receipt that I throw in the garbage, I, I keep them all in a book. And uh, it's a very special night that you're here. And in the top right-hand corner, you have a little hand-numbered, it's kind of like up in the cigarette burn that you're going to see. You've got a little number there. And in the olden times, they used to give away things at the movies. Uh, even back in the silent era, they used to give away cups and plates try and lure you in to come in and get a complete collection of them. Uh, and Guillermo del Toro has sent a whole lot of stuff to give to you. So I would love for um, a lot of you to start coming up to pick up your prizes. Now if your number is called, you're going to get to choose between the following items. Are you ready? Now here's the poster for The Shape of Water. And as you can tell, it's sort of a, a remake or tribute to the creature from the Black Lagoon. Uh, it's quite beautiful. I watched it just last night. You can choose between that poster or between this version of the poster. Yeah. <laughs> or you can get a little tiny version, because some of you, you don't like big things. <laughs> tiny version of the poster. So we're going to bring up 10 people. You get your number, you gotta show me your number, right? I'd like number nine, number 19, number 29, number 36, number 48, number 50, number 64, number 77, and number 81. What would you like? <laughs> grab that right here. This, what would you like? Take one of those. Yep, take one of those right over there. This one right here. Just grab one of those posters. 
You good? Can you see this? Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Hey, look at that. Grab one of those posters that you really want here. Can you see? Great. Beautiful. Whatever poster you want there. You got the blue one. Love it. All right, give them a round of applause here. All right, next up, Guillermo del Toro. Uh, he made a feature-length film before both of the movies we're showing tonight. What's it called? Oh, uh, come here, where are you? Kronos, wonderful. Now, if we're getting Kronos correctly, I am going to give you uh, an egg timer. <laughs> that is from The Shape of Water. You will find out what that means when you watch the movie. Now, Guillermo del Toro, he also doesn't just make art cinema or films He's a Mexican filmmaker. The both of the movies we're watching is about Spanish Civil War, so this is important that you're not confusing the two. But I am very interested in some of you who know what sequel he directed. Hellboy 2. Hellboy 2. Wow, both of you. This is nice. All right, come on up, both of you. Hellboy 2 and Blade Part 2. So those of you who've watched those Hollywood franchises, you know that, in fact, he's quite good at them. Now, for getting those correctly, not only do you get an egg timer. <laughs> you're also getting a t-shirt here. Or the shape of water. What size would you like? Small. Okay, next, Guillermo del Toro is part of the Three Amigos, self-proclaimed, of three Mexican filmmakers who are bringing the Mexican pride back to, or for the first time, to Hollywood. That's good, I'm glad that, I know you know about Alfonso Cuarón, very nice. All right, and we know about Alejandro Gonzalez. I still can't say that, right? But these three filmmakers, they, they literally are changing Hollywood. And every time they make a new movie, please go and watch them. And I'm curious if any of you know the very first film that Alfonso Cuaron directed. Very good, come on up. Now for getting that, you get an egg timer. <laughs> so many of these. What size of shirt would you like? Small. Okay. There you go. And are you ready for this? Hold on, where are you going? <laughs> this is an umbrella. <laughs> now I had this in my house. No, this is a shape of water umbrella. I can't open it up, it's bad luck. But in the rain, scales appear on this fucking thing. <laughs> there you go. Love it. All right, you got your chicken stuff back out? All right, I'd like number 91, 109, 116, 128, 139, 140, 150, 166, and 173. Come on up, let's see these numbers. You're gonna grab your poster right here, one of these, white or blue, white or blue. It is. There you go. White or blue? You see this? That's good. That's good. Love it. Okay. Good. Go for it. You're good. Thank you. Okay, good. Oh, please. 150. recognized is when something goes wrong <laughs> and when you're working with 35 millimeter prints it's um it's quite exciting um in that sense that every 20 minutes you've got you've got some new magical experience that's going to happen 
Um, and Midnight's for Maniacs for the past 15 years has really stressed showing movies in 35 millimeter as we've started to lose that medium where the majority of theaters now around the world, they do not project film. And um, I feel that it really lines up with a lot of filmmakers like Wes Anderson, like Guillermo del Toro, who um, are very interested in sort of this artistic aesthetic. They don't have to uh, make film prints anymore. They don't have to even make movie posters anymore. Those of you who have been going to the movies, uh, you notice that uh, we just have to have JPEGs in the theater and they can rotate them. And so there's a lot of us that sort of live in this obsoletia world. And you have a lot of uh, stuff. You have these bookshelves that are filled with things and, and you have a whole new world, right? Where everyone, they just keep everything inside their computer and think that they don't own a lot of stuff. But you know how insane those computers are, right? They're filled with absolute chaos. So. When you walk into a movie like Guillermo del Toro, and I can tell you, please make sure to go to The Shape of Water on its opening weekend. Uh, this is part of the industry, is that they look at numbers on that first weekend. And for a filmmaker to get to work within Hollywood and to make a movie like The Shape of Water, which you will notice is pretty much exactly Pan's Labyrinth, just <laughs> made in an American's perspective, um, is the only way that these filmmakers that can keep making cinema. Uh, Guillermo del Toro, we take him for granted. Uh, he is truly a unique voice that is working within the studio system. And um, I want to make sure to give you as much of the stuff that he made um, because it's important to him just as much as I hope it's important to some of you. So can you pull out your ticket stubs? Those of you who are still kicking around for our second feature, The Devil's Backbone. Now we have an advanced screening of The Shape of Water that in fact um, we have some passes here for. And I saved these for those of you who are true fans who want to actually watch two movies tonight. Now the screening is uh, December 5th. It's at 7.30 p.m. It's at the Van Ness 1000. You need to take these tickets there and you have to get there clearly. You have to get there early. Uh, because The Shape of Water has major Oscar buzz. Um, there are a lot of different film reviewers that have already called it the best movie of the year. And there's a lot of cinema fans who find it to be way too sentimental for their taste. Got your ticket stub out? Wonderful. Now I'd like to give uh, one specifically out to number 99. 99, beautiful, come on up. This is an umbrella. Oh. Oh. That as I said, and those of you who are just showing up, uh, when the rain touches this umbrella, it uh, turns into the creature from the Black Lagoon. <laughs> so there's that, and then if you'd like to grab one of those movie posters, whichever one you want, the blue or the blue. Wonderful, give it up right here, don't be jealous. <laughs> All right, let's get some high numbers up here. How about number uh, 173? Beautiful, come on down. All right, how about number 172? Come on up. How about number 188? 197. Number two, not lower, 209. We sold this fucking theater out. Can we give that up for a second? This is amazing. Number 214. Number five. Beautiful. If you'd like to grab a big movie poster or a little movie poster, it's completely up to you. It's all the same image. Big movie poster or little movie poster. Wonderful. What do we got right there? Love it. Love it. I'd like to grab one of those, one of those big posters, and if you want one of the blue ones, they're still hiding right there. Great. All right. So then, um, if you noticed in the credits, which is something that I like to teach in my film classes, that. Um, 
he should really respect the credits at the end of a movie. Uh, not just because there's going to be footage at the very end, uh, but because every single person that works on these movies, you start to um, really respect them. Uh, this, is, this is a step past you not pulling out your fucking phone during the movie. Uh, this is you actually looking at how many people work their asses off so that you could sit here and then have the audacity sometimes to say, oh, I want my two hours back. Uh, every single movie that gets made is absolutely impressive to me, and as a film historian, uh, you start to notice names, and you start to notice perhaps the cinematographer's name, uh, because he is in fact the cinematographer for our second film tonight. What's his name? Guillermo. Not Cuaron. Navarro. 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 Very nice, right? Guillermo Navarro. And then the music that we had in our film Pan's Labyrinth, which in my opinion is one of the greatest scores in the history of cinema. What's his name? Navarrete. Very nice, right? So when you start to connect these things, you, you really are going to go home tonight, and you're not just going to um, perhaps watch a TV series. You're going to continue on with Guillermo del Toro's films, um, and you're going to you're going to have some really deep cuts. In fact, because you're going to you're going to care about the two little um, angels that got killed. And uh, what were their names? Chong. Cheech and Chong, right? We feel bad for them, right? Because Guillermo del Toro, he cares about every single one of his monsters. Every one of his ghosts, every one of his characters, he makes sure that he puts two and maybe even three dimensions into them. All right, we're stalling enough for all these people who are sad waiting in the bathroom lines here. Um, but I would love to know uh, the science fiction film that Alfonso Cuaron made that is now considered the greatest science fiction film ever made. Children, Children of Men. Now a lot of people may have thought Gravity and we could have that big debate one day <laughs> uh, when we play maybe both of them. Um, but I want to make sure that you're coming out to more Midnight's for Maniac screenings here. We've got a handful before the end of the, the year. We're packing them in on this Saturday is uh, Francis Ford Coppola, a tribute to his gothic films. Uh, one is the 25th anniversary for Dracula, uh, and the second is his very first film, Dementia 13, and that was made in 1963, and both of these movies are completely underrated. Even Coppola doesn't realize how brilliant Dracula is because he was obliterated by the critics. Uh, he purposely did not use CGI. He wanted to use German expressionism, uh, techniques like forced perspective and sets and uh, the film is uh, absolutely stunning to be made in the 1990s uh, it's it's I know one of my friends that kind of calls it the quintessential 1990s film Ben right um, this is this is a real special treat the movie does not play at all and um, it's not we're not playing it because it's so bad that it is maybe good it's it's actually a masterpiece and I, I really stress to you come on 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 Saturday it's at 7 p.m. And, uh, and then on December 23rd, those of you who are not leaving the city, I'm playing a film called Christmas Evil. And it's an exploitation stalker film from 1980. And it's John Waters' favorite Christmas movie. <laughs> and that is actually saying a lot. Uh, because it's, it's a very intelligent movie. Um, it, it really truly explores what a lot of us, we go through some pretty dark, dark moments in these, these weeks here of December. And it isn't just because we feel bad that we, we might not have family around us. It's, it's a truly over-consumed time period, and it fucks with us. And, and Christmas Evil surprisingly really taps into this. So it's December 23rd at 9 p.m. Um, in February, we've got a tribute to Miyazaki yet again. Uh, all of them will be the Japanese versions with English subtitles in 35 millimeter. Uh, and while you were watching Pan's Labyrinth, I'm sure that some of you might have thought about how it is very similar to a film like Spirited Away. Um, movies like The Wizard of Oz, or his, his reference points, they, they go quite deep. Uh, there's also a tribute to the Gus, Gus Van Sant's career coming up, as well as the Coen brothers. Um, and so if you would please make sure to sign up here at the Roxy. Uh, e email me at Midnight's for Maniacs, as well as follow a series called Roxine, which is Spanish language cinema here at the Roxy year round. Uh, and it really is a, a one 
one theater experience that you get to come on out within a community and experience films that perhaps you wouldn't otherwise. All right, I think we've got everybody else in here. I would love to uh, give a prize away to number 61. They're still here. That's all right. How about number 64? How about number six? How about 146 as well? Both of you, come on down, right? We got two of you. Bold enough to uh, yell the number out, right? Because they truly do want to give you a couple of posters here. One, we can't stress to you how wonderful the shape of water is. And two, if you would like to take this one. You got it. There you are. You're welcome. Absolutely. Please make sure you turn your cell phones back off. Give these to super fans a round of applause as well as yourself and at the end of the movie as you can see I have a ton of these small posters here I want everybody in this theater to walk out with with something tonight um, this is Midnight's for Maniacs my name is Jesse Hawthorne Fix and have a wonderful time with the devil's background So, um, any of you who are interested in coming out uh, for an advanced screening of The Shape of Water, I have some passes. It's December 5th, it's at 7.30. I also have these uh, little mini posters, and I appreciate so many of you sticking around late tonight on a school night, no less. And um, please make sure that you uh, give us your contact information, contact us online to uh, make sure that we can continue such a wonderful, beautiful crowd tonight. You guys give it up for yourselves. Have a wonderful night, be safe, and come on up. We'll give you a poster and some passes. <laughs>